All right, our next speaker is Representative Marion O'Neill. <laughs> Yay. Representative O'Neill uh, represents District 29B, which includes the communities of Buffalo, Monticello, Maple Lake. She is in her third term, and she has served every single one of her terms on the House Public Safety Policy and Finance Committee. It's an important committee. It's something that almost all of our agenda items go through, and every single gun control bill goes through. Uh, so it's, it's really, she's been a very strong fighter for Second Amendment, for the Second Amendment on that committee. And a little bit of a story here. Uh, re earlier this year, on March 1st, uh, we had a, a committee hearing. Uh, Dave Pinto had pulled some shenanigans in order to get his uh, his bill heard in committee and uh, we had organized uh, you know organized a lot of you guys showed up there and again oh, thank you for that nice. but representative Marion O'Neill looked at the bills and just saw some really terrible things and she wanted to speak out and so in just just prior to uh, that committee hearing I went to her office and checked just to check in I check in with all the members see if they need anything if they have all their talking points ready all of that stuff and I look and she's got between eight and ten statute books open on her desk nice. she's got notes and cross references and post it notes and bookmarks and all of these different things and she's just sitting here going frantically highlighting and taking notes and if you guys haven't seen that go back and watch that video because she completely dismantled Dave Pinto's bill during that committee and we need that kind of uh, strong and uh, brilliant fighter. So with that, our next speaker, Representative Marion O'Neill. is welcome to your capital. It's newly restored and it's beautiful. Welcome. I'm joined today by a whole bunch of members and if you, I know they already raised their hands but more have come. So if you are a member of the Minnesota House or the Minnesota Senate, please wave at everybody. Let, let them see the support here. showing up. Your voice matters. We need to hear your voice. How loud can you be? We need that in spades. Let's just talk about what happened just this week over in the Senate. We just talked a little bit about it. Senator Lass brought up two terrible amendments on the Senate floor. One was about, oh, it was reasonable gun control is what he wanted to say. <laughs> Expanding no background thing. checks, universal background checks. Crap. A version <laughs> of the red flag law. More crap. More crap. And the it's senators crazy. bravely voted him down. Yeah! Also this week, you may have heard a misrepresentation in the press. You know, they always get things right. And no! Oh, no. Right. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and you may have read in the newspaper or seen that Speaker Dow opened the door just a crack to right. gun control measures. I'm here to tell you that that is Check absolutely not true. Yes. <laughs> Speaker Dow. This is Speaker Dow's own handwriting, and he said, he said, Marion, I want you to go and I want you to tell them something for me. And he says this. As long as I am Speaker of the Minnesota House of Representatives, I will block each and every effort to infringe on your Second Amendment rights. I want to remind you of what the Minnesota House of Representatives did just a year ago. We passed constitutional carry. We passed stand your ground. You know, and I've been around a while, and this is my third term, and I actually worked as a staffer in the Senate. And I remember when the Senate went, they were controlled by the Republicans before, passed stand your ground then too. But you know that they didn't come, become law, and you know why they didn't become law, right? It wasn't because the Republicans didn't want it to, because we voted it through. We need a new governor. Yeah! yeah. yeah. A 
new governor. Yeah. A Let real me tell governor. You what did become law underneath a Republican House and a Republican Senate? We lifted the, more, the ban on suppressors. Now this is going to become very important. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem so much important when we were passing it, but stopping governments from taking your firearms when they declare a state of emergency. Yeah. Yeah. We also expanded carry permit reciprocity from other states with similar gun laws to Minnesota. I remember very clearly when we were debating that. And you know, the complexity of state law from state to state is so unbelievable. Oh my God, there was yes. so much more work to done and we literally couldn't get it done in the amount of time we had. So we all have to come back to that one. Please do. Right here at the state capitol, we also lifted the notice requirement so you could carry right here at your capitol without notifying anybody else. So let's just take a moment. What would it be like if we once again had Democrat control of the House, no. the Senate, and the Governor's office? No. Civil War. Revolution. Probably. Slocum's bill. Representative Slocum's bill would be your future. Do you want to know what's in that bill? Yes! I've read that bill. It Mandatory sucks. registration for every single firearm. No. Nope. My problem is I've actually read Prohibiting the, the purchase. Yeah. The I sale, read the, whole thing. the transfer, the or even leaving our state with a semi automatic rifle. Oh. Redefining what an assault weapon is. If he had his way, oh. this would be an assault weapon. To include a detachable magazine detachable. and any more than seven like rounds really? in the chamber. Do you have any retention on that? Yeah, it's a super. It gets worse. Level two or three? We talked about uh, data earlier. Two. We have Representative Lucero here. He's our data king. All of your gun data with identifying oh, information with would be ice. public data. I love them. Oh! That promotes crime. The worst of all, and I'm sure the police hate this the worst of all, you have to allow the police into your home. Never. To make sure that your firearms have been properly stored. No! Your future would look no, like whenever they want. Democrat they want to show up at 10 o'clock at night. They can show up at 10 o'clock at night. I made my peace with God. I hope he did. Right? Let's look at it, what the Democrats call reasonable gun control measures. No such thing. We mentioned that on March 1st, Representative Pinto forced the Public Safety Committee to have a hearing. Now, he's a Harvard educated lawyer. Non I went toe to toe with him. Good for you. On the red flag law. Yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just point out some of the most egregious things that I found in that bill. And yeah, I, I was a There's policy a huge nerd. List. And I dug through it like crazy. There's a list like this of egregious First crime. thing, he drafted it to a very strange part of statute. And I'm not sure exactly what he meant by it. He put it in mental illness crisis housing. What <laughs> the hell is that? Mental illness crisis housing is where he drafted the bill to. I don't know what message he was trying to send, but it was very bizarre. Yeah. One could say that. <laughs> right? <laughs> then, to take your guns away, the level, the legal standard is a preponderance of evidence, and it could be an ex parte hearing. So what does that mean in our common language? It means a thumbnail more than 50%, more likely than not, that you are dangerous and your guns should be taken away. No, nope. And you, you have, have no to be say. at the hearing when they talk about it. That's ex parte. You have no say. Then to get your guns back, if they take them from you for six months to two years, mm -hmm. Then it's a higher legal standard to get them back. Yep. Clear and convincing. So that's 75% that 
You have you have to prove to the court that you are not dangerous. In what in what court of law do you have to prove yourself innocent? Anybody getting shot right now? That was my question to him. He didn't have an answer. Ninety five hundred people here carrying it. I also argued you know, we already have yep. very robust civil commitment statutes in mm -hmm. Minnesota. <laughs> so if you truly are a danger to yourself, you're going to kill yourself, or you're a danger to someone else, they can already take you and put you someplace safe for 72 hours to evaluate you. Doesn't that make more sense than taking the guns away? Because you know what? If you're going to hurt somebody and they take your guns, you're still going to hurt still somebody. You can use a knife or a ball bat. You can use a rope. You could use a hammer, you could use a truck, you could use a, a, van. a van, you could use a bomb, like in Oklahoma City. Yep. Yep. It doesn't Canada. take away the problem. Now we at the Minnesota House Representatives and the Minnesota Senate, we are concerned about protecting life. Every life. From conception till natural death. And none of us, none of us want to see an innocent person's life taken from them, whether it be at the hand of a criminal, whether it be the hand of a terrorist, or a tragic accident. And we have collectively worked to make our roads safer, and, and I appreciate the banner back here that talks about the drunk driver. Yes. Because you know they kill a whole lot more people, distracted driving, drunk driving. Yes, they do. Texting and driving. And we know with all those issues this year. Eating sandwiches and driving. I myself have a bill that would mandate after your second offense, ignition interlock, so a drunk driver couldn't get in their car and go and kill somebody. Yes. But taking guns away from law-abiding citizens is not the answer. No. no. We stand here today, united, law-abiding citizens, to defend our Second Amendment rights. Yeah. And they will stop at nothing to take that away. Yes, and that's why we are here today. Thank you. Thank you! Thank you, Representative O'Neill. Thank you very much.